Welcome back to part four of Maker Centered Learning in Any Classroom. I'm going to share some just things to think about and some resources. First, foremost, learning is messy. When you're making, it's even messier. Um, people are going to spill stuff, you know, things are going to fall off the table, um, organizing uh, pieces, parts, and materials. Um, that's just gonna it's just gonna be messy you got to work on how to teach proper ways to clean things up and take care of your mess you got to anticipate Let them, yeah well, you know you're gonna make a mess just clean it up not a big deal also the path people take to learning is not a straight linear thing sometimes it's a, it's definitely a truly definitely a, a long and winding road as um, the Beatles said, or was it just Paul McCartney? You know, one important thing, uh, nice phrases to work with are leaving the space better than it was or resetting the space for the next group. Yeah, there's going to be a bit of organized chaos. Time is, is a big factor because true learning takes time and everyone learns at a different pace takes a different amount of time to learn stuff. So how do we give everyone the time they need to explore and learn? How do we find time for the conversations? Because you have to find time for the conversations because that's where everything happens. You know, we only have so many class hours. But when you do that, when you get when you get those conversations, when you give everyone the time they need to explore and to delve into things, the learning is so much better. And it's long lasting. That's what we want. That's what's a big thing about this. Now, I have not mentioned a whole bunch about tools and materials so much as this rattle off some. Um, but, you know, there's an infinite number of materials. I mean, anything is a material, even dirt. I mean, think back to, you know, paints when painting first started centuries, centuries ago. You know, what did they use for pigments? And it was, you know, different dirts, different minerals and different dirts, um, right? You know, you're going to have to uh, use what you can get easily to start with, especially, you know, dumpster dive, um, collect recyclables. So another one that I didn't talk a lot about them, though I did mention some stuff. Maker's not about the stuff. It's about the thinking and the conversations. So, you know, it's whatever we can get to help us have those conversations. And there's such a wide variety of tools and a wide variety of prices. Um, it, it, that's a whole other conversation. No two schools can have the same stuff. No school can have everything. You focus on what the, do the kids want? What will they use? What will your community support? Those are real important questions to delve into. Um, you know, we've created lists and lists of things. Like that bit.ly goes to a list of, that's separated by A uh, alphabetically in a spreadsheet. It's just to give you ideas, things to think about. You can't have everything. That would be nice. Storage is always an issue. You need stuff to create with. Um, you need, you'll have projects in progress. You know, where do you put all the materials? Where do you store all the projects? Everybody's answer is different, but you need to come up with a plan. And like everything, iterate it. You know, portable is good. Um, get a variety of totes and boxes. They always inexpensive. Dollar stores are great. Even one of those big box stores has these dollars, dollar, dollar ten shoe box size plastic totes. Clear totes are really nice because you can see what's inside of them. Um, you know, when you want to make with stuff, you gotta have have the things visible so the kids can see what they've got because out of sight is out of mind. You know, if you don't have a box of string out, they don't know they can use string. You know, it's, it's that simple. Um, label your stuff really well. It's going to take a lot of time maybe to get it going. Uh, but you got to label things very well. And sometimes also use visuals to label, like put the piece on, you know, put the picture of the material on the box or one sample of the material, you know, glue it to the box. Um, one thing that I, you know, there's this cabinet up here, the shelving unit that they made, where they have all these uh, 
holes to put shelves of different size. What's something someone shared that I never thought about was like baker racks that have you know they're for like cookies that have really thin racks and you got the you get the um, food trays they can go in there it's a great thing for projects is they can put them in multiple heights you just got to buy a whole bunch of trays right um, it's going to take a variety find what works best for you you know you're wondering how to do this how do i do any of this i'm talking a whole pedagogy shift change how we do stuff um, it's not going to work well yeah it's not going to work at first nothing works right the first time there's always problems with it um, as a Chinese proverb says, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And then you just put one foot in front of the other, as the Christmas special says. Start with one topic. Or get down a list and think of your best topic, your best unit, and then your worst. The one that you like, the, the, you, you struggle with, you struggle to do, is always hard to do. Um, pick one of those. And then... Turn it into a maker-centered learning experience. Start with one thing and then learn from it. it it's, things aren't going to go perfect. You, you, you're trying out something new. You're modeling learning, which would be really important. Um, it's going to feel like it failed because it's different from before. It didn't fail. We talk about those. Those Again, the discussions, Why did it, what went wrong? What didn't go as good as well as we wanted to? And talk with the kids. What was good what was bad how do we fix it how do we change it how do we do it differently um maybe just for a unit give them the reins and let them run with it and see what happens um but you got to start with one just start with one thing and get it going you know build up over time someone was amazed i told them i had like 110 geometry videos on my youtube channel i said i started with the first unit and i made them over a whole year i just kept making them putting them up start with one you know, and then when, when you got that, that idea, then, you know, do another one. If we let them, well, no matter what, if we let them, but, you know, these kids will literally make the future. And what do we, how do we want them to be able to make it? We got to open up their curiosity and their creativity and their innovation. Every space, um, every maker space, every few rooms, a hallway, need to have examples of how you put paper and cardboard together because it all starts with cardboard and paper prototypes. So they gotta understand the, the ways to attach things. Um, pictures like this are easy to find in a Google search. You know, maybe it's a first student project that they just practice making uh, their own sample poster. It's important to be able to work with paper and cardboard. I have collated a list of about 100 books um, and they are categorized for like for everyone for projects for kids for teachers um, I haven't read them all but I you know get recommendations from people I know there are many more books out there you've got a book that you think that's not on the list you really think should be there send it to me um, it's to give us ideas about that some of the books that I have on this list uh, Invent to Learn by Sylvia and Gary, and then Maker Center Learning by um, Project, Z Project Zero. Um, these are like considered the two best Maker Centered Learning books. They are not tiny, but they're not massively large, um, but they're considered to be top of the top of the pile of when you want to learn about Maker Centered Learning. Dale Doherty kind of started us off with Make Magazine um, several years ago. So, you know, kind of gave the whole maker community um, a focus. So you should really read his book, Free to Make. And um, Lifelong Kindergarten by Mitchell Resnick from the MIT Media Lab it is a great read about what education uh, can and should be. And it's very maker-centric. You know, educators always talk about the C's of education. Well, he talks about the P's. Projects, passion, peers, and play, and yeah, those are really important, and it's things that we need to get back into education. If you need some quicker reads, like you want to just get another teacher interested, uh, Laura Fleming and uh, Nick Provenzano have these nice little uh, short books about making and making ideas and maker mentality. Uh, Laura's an educator in New Jersey, and Nick is in Michigan. There is tons of books about maker projects. 
So it kind of depends on your uh, your audience, your intentions, uh, your goals, your topics. So I've got a few of them there, but they're more than what I have there. And there's a couple of them. Uh, students For students to read is also a whole bunch of books that are very uh, Maker and STEM centric. Um, let's see, Ada, Ada Lace, Ada Twist, uh, Rosie Revere, who's a, a Iggy Peck Architect. Iron, there, there's just a whole bunch. Um, and then Beautiful Oops, some people always, there's some teachers who always read Beautiful Oops at the beginning of a uh, unit, not a unit, um, um, a beginning of the class kind of thing at the beginning of the year, beginning of the semester, because, you know, trying to get the other, we're going to have lots of oopses in here. That's what this is about. You can do story time with kids, kids of all ages, even high school. Um, read, read parts of the book to, to them. Um, kids of all ages kind of like that. You, you, get, you set up the culture, you set up the idea. Um, picture book, books work fine, all levels, but especially for the elementary levels. It helps activate the brain differently. So I put together uh, some websites a few years ago that are browser-based creation kind of sites that allow you to design and create, you know, just in the browser. So they're good for Chromebooks. The idea is it's kind of virtual makerspace when you couldn't get into the physical makerspace uh, a few years ago. So there's, I don't know, about 70 there. And I do have them uh, categorized a bit and also grade leveled. If you're on Twitter, there's some hashtags to follow. There's also some Facebook groups uh, to follow, some Maker Teacher Facebook groups that you can follow. Um, if you're still wondering why Maker, well, first of all, I haven't done a really good job, and I got it, and you got to tell me that so I can get better at this. Um, but Maker Center Learning really helps develop all of the top ten workforce skills that are needed to be successful. Uh, it just, it, it just works on them all. It's those people like to call them soft skills and people hate that they call them soft skills. So we call them 21st century skills, but it's like every century skills. It's, a, you know, current skills. It's skills that they need that by doing the maker-centered learning, they work on these skills and content. So it's a win-win. Um, again, if I haven't done a good job, you know, share some feedback to me. Or if you have any ideas or resources that you'd love to share, you can always email me or put it in the feedback and I'll share it out to uh, my Twitter network. I'd like to talk to you about this uh, organization called Remake Learning, who's out of Pittsburgh, that every year they, uh, they do lots of stuff throughout the year, but every spring, uh, April, May, they have what are called Remake Learning Days, where they try to get organizations to host an event to uh, promote maker learning for kids of all ages. Yeah, they want you to like host a family making event so they can practice more maker learning. Thank you for spending time with me. I always love to talk about maker ideas. If you want to talk more about maker education, just contact me on Twitter or my email. So Shirky17 is my Twitter. Paul at paulshirkle.org is my email. And you can check out other things about me on my website, paulshirkle.org. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Make sure you go out and make something.